gorgeous people. I'm back with my first fashion DIY tutorial and that was the Wizard of Oz inspired ruby slipper that I told you about in my intro video. And I am so happy with how the shoes turned out, but I definitely had um, quite a few roadblocks in this tutorial that you'll see when you know I show you how to make it. And I hope that you learn from me with all the mistakes that I made and don't make the same mistakes that I did. I still have a super cool shoe, but it definitely took a lot of uh, work to get it to where it is. So before I get into this DIY, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on how I got to this idea. As most of you know, I have a very large shoe collection and from time to time I'll go into my shoe room and I'll see what shoes I haven't worn very often or what shoes I haven't maybe worn at all and see what I can do to make them be something more like what I would want to wear on a daily basis. Now these shoes were gorgeous to begin with. The gorgeous blue glitter curved heel, they were so pretty, but the problem for me was that they didn't really match like a lot of the things I have in my closet. So I just found myself never really wearing them, even though they're really pretty. And I know most people will be like, I would have never touched those shoes. I would have left them the way that they were, but I needed to do something with them because for me, they just didn't work. So I was originally going to do a different DIY with these shoes, but um, after I did the built up for that DIY, I decided that they would make a wonderful ruby slipper. So I just, tore all of that off and that's why there's all this white goofiness on the shoe that you see of course that you see now of course they weren't originally like that um I had to uh, tear off all that work that I did to do something different that I decided not to do so that I could get this uh shoe prepared ready to go for the Wizard of Oz ruby slipper Okay, I'm done rambling on about everything that I needed to do, didn't do, should have done, all this stuff. We're just going to jump right into materials so that I can start showing you how to make these shoes. The materials needed for this tutorial are the shoes of your choice, acrylic caulking, which I purchased at Walmart for $2.50, the gun to disperse the caulking, then you're going to need some painting tools, the paintbrush, and I don't know what those things are called, the painting knives. Um, you'll need something like that or a plastic knife would work. You also need mosaic stones, scissors, ribbon if you decide to do the bow. I decided not to do a bow. You can use gold glitter, that's optional, red glitter, yellow acrylic paint, red acrylic paint, Mod Podge, which I suggest getting in the glossy finish. A container to mix your acrylic caulking in. And also, you're going to need some paper to gather up the glitter so that you can put it back in the container. So let's get started. You're going to start by uh, painting the top of the shoe red. And the reason why you're going to do this is because if any of the red glitter should not cover for whatever reason, you don't want people to see blue on the outside of or on the shoe. You know, you want it to all be red. So definitely make sure that you get some good coverage. You can do a couple of coats if you want to. Just make sure that it dries in between coats. You're going to see a little bit later that I decided to just do the one coat. I felt it was good enough for these shoes. But if you have like a really bold color and it's still showing through a lot, then you're definitely going to want to make sure that you do a couple of coats on the shoe. And this is just me continuing to show you how I painted the entire shoe. And I keep looking at the camera because I keep thinking I'm in the way of the camera. So, you know, this is all amateur stuff. See the elbow there? That's great for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah, I know. So just finished painting the other side of the shoe here. Almost done. And if you're using a Mary Jane style shoe like I decided to use, you're definitely going to make sure you do the strap as well. So just don't leave any parts out because you don't want to have a red shoe and then a blue strap. That's not going to look right unless that's the look you're going for. I mean, it'd be totally fabulous if that's the case. But if you're trying to do something similar to what I'm doing, make sure you paint the entire shoe red. Okay, so 
so that's the finished shoes painted red i let them dry this is me showing you what they looked like once they were dry the coat was good enough for me and so i just moved on so the next part you're going to want to put some paper towels inside the shoe which i did not put that in the supplies needed at the beginning of the video because i forgot about it but you're definitely going to stick some paper towels rags or something to, on the inside of the shoe for when you do this glitter part because as you know glitter gets everywhere i hate glitter i absolutely hate it but for me it was the best option for this particular diy but i most generally never use glitter because it is so messy that's the reason why i don't like it so now that we got that little rant out of the way we're going to move on to getting your mod podge which i think yeah Oh, you also need the paper too, I'm sorry. You're gonna to wanna to put the paper underneath the shoe to catch the glitter so that you can put it back into the glitter container. So then you're gonna just cover the whole shoe with the Mod Podge. Um, you're gonna to wanna to work in small sections though. Sections? <laughs> You're gonna to wanna to work in small sections and I'm just kind of wiping off the bottom as I'm doing it. Then you're just gonna sprinkle the glitter on top of that Mod Podge that you just put on there. And then you're gonna tap it off over the paper is the idea because again you want to make a funnel out of the paper and put that back into the glitter bottle so that you can use it you're not wasting glitter see that's where i'm putting it in back into the container and i just keep doing that every single time i do a section i will pick up the paper and get that glitter off of there because it's gonna keep getting all over parts of the shoe you don't really want it on because again, glitter gets everywhere. But the mistake that I made here is that you definitely wanna make sure that you're smoothing out the Mod Podge as you're doing this. Make sure it's super smooth because it will dry exactly the way that you have it on the shoe there. So see how I have some parts of the shoe that are like a little heavier than other parts? That shows through on the other side of the shoe and I'm gonna show you that um, at the end after I'm done doing this shoe. And it's just, it, it makes, it's, it's an eyesore. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are smoothing it out just like you would paint if you're painting something. Yeah, I'm excited, it was beautiful. So here's me doing this last side and of course you're gonna make sure you do the strap as well. The thing with the strap though is that it makes it really stiff. So you're gonna to wanna to flex, after it's dried and everything, when you wanna put the shoe on, if you have a strap, you're gonna to wanna to flex it out a little bit and re-put the holes in there because the glue is obviously going to stiffen it up a little bit. Now see, I went really thick on this side. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking, why I did it this way, but I'm here's me putting the glitter on the shoe and I'm finishing up that little part there and I I, after I tap it up, I'm not sure if I show you now or if I caught it a little bit later, but I do end up fixing this at the end, but it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what I was thinking. I don't normally work with glitter. I'm guessing that's part of the learning curve here, but most people who work with glitter would probably know that you can't do it that way. Glitter and Mod Podge, you know, I mean, I guess it's the same idea if you were covering with fabric. So I should have thought of it in that direction. So I'm tapping all of it off here. And then I'm doing the little strap, as I told you to make sure that you don't leave that out. And I noticed an empty space there. So I went ahead and I added some more uh, glue and I'm going to cover it with glitter. And that was also another mistake that I made. Do not overlap the glitter and the glue. It just doesn't look good. So you're definitely going to want to make sure that you are, see, see those bubbles? Yeah, that's not the look I was going for at all. <laughs> so if you're going for that look, it looks amazing. But if you're not, then do not do this. This is me going over it again. Obviously, I did not learn my lesson. Clearly not because there. Okay, this is the final shoes after I've covered them completely with glitter and let them dry. Let them dry for about an hour. So now you're gonna wanna seal the shoe with the Mod Podge and this was another mistake that I made. You're gonna wanna mix glitter into the glue. I just went over top of the shoe with my inexperience with glitter with the Mod Podge to seal that glitter in 
And when the shoes dried, they looked really, they like dolled them out to me. And it wasn't the sparkly, gorgeous ruby slipper look that I was going for. So you're going to see in the next clip that I correct this by adding glitter to the glue. But actually, before I corrected it, I ended up redoing the shoes all over again with the Mod Podge and the glitter routine because I just... I wanted them super sparkly and I was afraid if I just did the glitter mixture with the Mod Podge that it wouldn't be enough. So I went ahead, redid the shoes again, and then sealed them because you have to seal this glitter. Otherwise, you're going to have red glitter all over the place. Everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, you're going to leave a trail of red glitter. And that's exactly what you cannot have happening. So you have to seal this in. And the Mod Podge is the best thing because it looks funky now, but it dries 100% clear. So that wasn't the issue. The issue was, even though I had the glossy finish, it wasn't sparkly enough for me. So that's why I went ahead after that, redid the shoes, did those steps that I just did before, and then added the glitter into the Mod Podge and it looks amazing when I'm done with it. I was so happy. I wish I would have realized that mistake to begin with. It would have saved a lot of time and this video probably would have came out a lot sooner. But again, learn from my mistakes. Do not make that mistake. Make sure you mix the glitter into the Mod Podge before sealing the shoe. So this is me showing you that you're just going to pour some glitter into the uh, mixture and just mix it in. That's literally all you do. So, and when I'm done mixing this, you're going to see that I say I'm happy with it. Well, I'm not. So I end up like splitting that glue in half and then I take literally just about the rest of the entire bottle and mix that glitter in there. So I get that nice, beautiful finish on the shoe. So add is a lot of glitter, lots and lots and lots of glitter less glue and it will still seal just fine. See, these are the finished shoes. Look how sparkly and pretty they are. That was the look I was going for. Excuse my son in the background, but I had to move into the kitchen because there was no way for me to finish this with him running around the house. So now the next part is you're going to get your container. You're going to get your acrylic caulking and your caulking gun. You're going to need your painting tools for this and your yellow paint. So, oh, you also need the gold glitter if you're going to use it. So you're just going to squirt some of that acrylic caulking into your bowl and make sure you have enough for both shoes because you don't want to have different variants in color but from shoe to shoe. So make sure that you're mixing more than enough to cover both of your shoes. And you're just going to mix that together until you get the desired color. Now, when I say desired color, for me, it was the same color as the mosaic stones. So here's me matching the stone to that acrylic caulking. Now you're just gonna put it onto the shoe. Sounds easy enough, but you know, this was actually one of the most difficult parts of the process. I have worked with acrylic caulking on shoes a lot, and this was um, a little bit harder with the stones, but if you don't want to make sure that you don't get any of the yellow on that top red part, just go ahead and tape that off. Use some painter's tape. I'm not a fan of taping stuff off. I always just wing it. That's just the way that I operate. If I make a mistake, I'll wipe it up, which I did a couple of times. But uh, the best thing that you can do is go ahead and, and tape off that top part or any part that you don't want to get the yellow paint on or the yellow mixture on. Um, tape that off with some painter's tape, you know, like the bottom of your shoe and all that kind of stuff. Cause you're going to see me as I'm putting the stones in, you're going to see me wiping the bottom of that shoe, um, off as well, because I decided to not tape it off, but I would definitely advise taping off the shoe if you want to make sure you don't get any on there. So here's me just adding the stones onto the shoe. Now I'm squishing them in because I wanted kind of, I was looking for like, a unfinished look with these. I wasn't looking for a perfectly like tiled shoe like you would a bathroom or something like that. I was looking for the tiles to be raised off kilter a little crazy. That's the look that I was going for. If that's not the look that you're going for once you do this step here and you let this dry you're gonna want to definitely go over it again and do it like you would like grouting a shoe. I decided not to do that. I wanted mine a little bit more crazy because that is my style. So I just left them this way after they dried. Now the thing with this acrylic caulking is it takes seven days. Yes, people, seven days to cure. So 
You're not going to be able to wear these shoes for seven days if you decide to use this method. There is other methods that you can use, like you could just simply paint the bricks on there. You could use this glue called Sagru, where you could, if you wanted to use the tiles, you put the Sagru glue on there and you just put the acrylic tiles in there. But that glue is very expensive. And the yellow only, it only had two packets of yellow in the thing and you need like four per shoe and each packet was twenty dollars so i was looking at like eighty dollars i just decided not to go that route i was trying to go the cheap route so i bought the acrylic caulking for two dollars and fifty cents at walmart even though it takes seven days to cure i have over 500 pairs of shoes this was not an issue for me i will just wear these after the seven days so now i'm just cleaning up the edges here trying to get everything finished off, make it look as nice. And then I'm just putting some glitter on there. Now, I actually wish I kind of skipped this step because it didn't end up looking the way that I saw it in my head. I was just looking for a little bit of a glittery shine on the bottom there. But uh, to be honest with you, I probably would have skipped this part. Um, it looks okay there, but I ended up going a little bit heavier because I thought that it was going to come off. So I ended up going a little bit heavier all over both of the shoes and then brushing it off at the end. This is me showing you the back of the shoe really quick because I thought felt like I could get a better angle with the camera so you can see me scraping it off. And as you can see, as I'm scraping off that excess, it definitely gets on the tiles. But what I found out is after it dries, it actually comes off those tiles very easily. Don't let it dry completely. I let it dry for like two days. Then I went in with my fingernail and just simply wiped it off. Came off perfectly fine, so... There's the finished shoe after I did all of that. Well, not finished, This it's not dried, but that's with all the um, stuff on there, the glitter and everything. And then I decided to add some ribbon at the very top as a separator between the bottom of the shoe and the top of the shoe because I felt that was just cheap ribbon from Joann's. That's what I'm showing you there, that was 99 cents. So I felt that it looked better that way. Um, to have the separator and I decided not to put the bow on the top because I felt like I had enough drama with these shoes I didn't need a bow at the top that's me showing you that right there so I decided yeah don't need the bow I'm gonna just nix that and there we go there's the finished shoe um really happy with it um you know it's it's definitely it's definitely a really nice shoe, but uh, it, it was <laughs> it was a lot of roadblocks to get there. Oh, and I didn't mention that I actually ran out of the one kind of stone. So I had to buy, see how big some of those stones are on there? I had to buy different stones because they didn't have the same ones anymore. So some of the stones are super big and some are like the smaller stones. So I just try to disperse as best as possible. This is me showing you a closer view of that. Like the one side looks really good, you know, with all the um, right same size stones and then you can see that other side that has the bigger stones there and you know that's just that's me pointing that out right there and look how big those stones are compared to the other side so I just wish that I would have uh, made sure I bought enough materials so that's another mistake that I made make sure that you have more than enough stones because you can always use them for another project don't make the same mistake that I did so yeah, that's how the shoe turned out. There's the big stones on the one side. I had to do one side completely all big stones. Then I got that. So there you go. That's how I made these Wizard of Oz inspired Ruby slippers. Although I love how the shoes turned out, I definitely didn't love the process to get the shoes to look the way that they do now. You know, the roadblocks with the stones and the all the mistakes that I made. I'm hoping that you can learn from those mistakes. Don't make the same ones. And I promise you, your shoes will turn out amazing. Now, if you decide to do these shoes, or um, shoes inspired by the techniques you saw in this video, please send me the pictures of your work because I love to see what other people do and what they come up with. It's just so exciting to see other people's take on some things that you have done or ideas that you give them because I know that I get inspired by other people, but the way that I make it is definitely not the way that they had thought about it or even considered. So, I mean, I just feel it's really cool for everybody to share and I would just love to see anything that you would come up with or if you have any suggestions on easier ways to do everything that I did in this video, please go ahead and leave that in the comments below. And if there's anything that you liked or got inspired by, please hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!